Jimmy Hoffa was an American labor union leader who went missing on July 30th, 1975. He's the president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, one of the largest labor unions in the United States at that time. Hoffa was last seen outside the the Marcus Red Fox restaurant in Bloomfield Township, Michigan. He was supposed to meet with two men, Anthony Provenzano and Anthony Giacalone, associated with organized crime. However, Hoffa never returned from that meeting, and his disappearance sparked a massive investigation that captured national attention. Numerous theories and speculations have emerged over the years regarding what happened to Hoffa, but his fate remains unsolved. Some ideas suggest that he was murdered to prevent him from regaining control of the Teamsters or killed as part of a power struggle within organized crime syndicates. Despite extensive searches and investigations, no conclusive evidence or remains have been found to solve the case definitely. The mystery surrounding Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance has continued to capture public interest, and his story has been the subject of books, documentaries, and even movies. It remains one of the most famous unsolved cases okay, in American history. Okay, so the history. first theory is Richard, Richard Kuklinski, who is also considered the Iceman. Okay, first off, he is... Dude, he's such a pathological liar, but anyways. Okay, first off, he was this hitman and serial killer. This guy named Philip Carlo interviewed him for like hours while Koklinski was in prison. And he's basically like confessed to killing Jimmy Hoffa. But he claimed that he was paid 40 grand to kill Hoffa by the mob. He explained that at the ultimate orders of powerful mob figure Russell Buffalino, he drove the Detroit to four other mob members. And no one knows for sure the names, but they weren't. They picked up Hoffa at the suburban restaurant and they knocked Hoffa out, stabbed him with a huge hunting knife in the skull and transported the body to New Jersey in a car trunk that was later crushed and sold as scrap metal. Klinsky said he's part of a car somewhere in Japan right now. Patrick Kane, a police officer who's part of the, the effort to put Klinsky behind bars, believes that Klinsky is telling the truth. However, others dismiss his claims, saying that he's such a liar. Robert Garrity, crime expert and a former FBI agent, has called his claim the most embarrassing one to date. So, I don't think this is likely because he's been proved as a liar. This is just as unlikely, honestly, as him, like, living, as Jimmy Hoffa living in Cuba right now, you know. But anyways, next theory. He was killed by a guy named Salvatore Rodriguez at Roland McMaster's horse farm in Milford Township. McMaster was an enforcer for the Teamsters. This theory is supported by the Hoffa Wars author, Dan Moldea, who interviewed Salvatore Brugiulio before Brugiulio was killed. In 2006, the FBI searched for Hoffa at the horse farm to no avail. However, Moldea believes that Brugiulio killed Hoffa at the farm and that his body was then put in a 55-gallon drum and sent to a mafia-controlled landfill in New Jersey in a gateway transportation truck. The trucking company's president was a Teamster pension fund trustee. I mean, I would support this theory but just doesn't have enough evidence so on to the next tony provenzano see it's becoming much more like tony provenzano ordered the hit on hoffa federal investigators theorized that provenzano ordered the hit because of the conflict between hoffa and provenzano that occurred while they were in prison in pennsylvania okay so okay it's making more and more sense the conflict grew to the point where the two despised each other all very true according to hoffa's son tony provenzano as hoffa's enemy was thought to have Fluence. Frank Fitzsimmons, the guy who took over, so Hoffa's successor, successor in the Teamsters while Hoffa was in jail. It was said that in 1974, Provenzano had threatened to kidnap Hoffa's loved ones and pull out their guts if he tried to become president of the Teamsters again. So their mutual contempt increased. Those are very interesting details, but there's more to Tony Provenzano. The most telling an interesting theory Provenzano was told of a connection to Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance by someone. This is like the most likely theory. So the mob killer Frank Sheeran, aka the Irishman, killed Hoffa on orders from Russell Buffalino. Sheeran spent some of his last weeks interviewing and possibly confessing with author Charles Brandt. Ironically, Hoffa was the one to initially hire Sheeran to be a killer, which is... <laughs> 
insane. This is all like exposed in the Martin Scorsese film, The Irishman. If you want to know, Hoff is said to have used Frank Sheeran to get rid of his rivals and secure his leadership in the Teamsters. Sheeran claims that after they picked up Hoff at the restaurant, they drove Hoff to an empty home where he shot Hoff in the back of the head. He walked inside. Sheeran then left as the body was taken to a funeral home controlled by the mob where he was cremated. Which is insane. This just blows my mind. Okay, but anyways, Sheeran apparently felt very guilty for betraying Hoffa because, I mean, he was a really good friend. But he did it because he said he would be killed if he refused, which is a very, very real and scary thing for life in the mafia. Henry Hill, all of them have said that, as he admitted to as well. But anyways, Sheeran said that he purposely sat in the front passenger seat of the car to send a secret warning to Hoffa. This is because he, Hoffa always sat in the front passenger seat. So Sheeran hoped that Hoffa would notice there was something going on and he would just leave, you know, which with gangsters, they, they could probably notice a little detail like that and think something's up because of the paranoid, superstitious minds a lot of them have. I don't know if Hoffa did, but I don't know. Maybe he did send something, but we'll never know. And even Hoffa's son said that he believed this. his father would have entered the car with Sheeran inside and that he wouldn't have done that if it had been other people or other suspects, only someone he trusted. So that's probably why he didn't he didn't leave he just trusted him but anyways according to the fbi sheeran was in the detroit area when hoffa vanished sheeran even named the house where the murder took place the famous abandoned house in the irishman but attempts to locate hoffa's blood evidence led nowhere according to reporter david ashenfelter it's possible sheeran is telling the truth but there really isn't any evidence apart from his word it's possible that sheeran may have wanted to clear his guilty conscience before dying especially with a strong catholic faith i could believe that this theory gets interesting is the possible involvement of Russell Buffalino, who Sheeran claims co-ordered the hit. PBS investigation, the Hoffa and tape conversations with President Nixon. Yes, Nixon. Via that Hoffa succession, a mafia member, Frank Fitzsimmons, worked with President Nixon to pardon Hoffa and get Hoffa out of prison. But also, they suggest that Hoffa Fitzsimmons played a role in the union ban on Hoffa until 1980, which is insane. The tapes indicate that Fitzsimmons wanted Hoffa out of prison so he could keep control of the Teamsters that supported Hoffa. However, Fitzsimmons didn't want Hoffa to be able to seize power, hence the restriction on Nixon's side. Nixon thought that pardoning Hoffa would endear him to workers because as Attorney General John Mitchell said in the tapes, he's just a tough, beer-drinking, no-good son of a bitch like most of them are. What a crazy way to sum up somebody. But anyways, documents at Wayne State University's Ruther Labor Library revealed that members of the Provenzano mob group sent a representative to Vegas to deliver, get this 500 grand to Charles Colson, special counsel to Nixon. The documents go on to show that more money from the mob was sent to Nixon for the restricted half a pardon, nearly $1 million in total. This was around the time of the Watergate scandal. That's another podcast. But anyway, according to a department a justice memo. This money could have been used to try to cover up Watergate, though the mob payments to Nixon were never confirmed. The documents suggest that Hoffa could have been suspicious of this. It's theoretically possible he could have been preparing to go public with the information that the mob paid off President Nixon. This would have made Russell Buffalino, one of the most powerful figures in the American mob, very nervous. Additionally, in 1975, Time Magazine published an article that linked Buffalino to CIA via Mafia and CIA going on in Cuba. According to journalist Ann Erkbeck, this destroyed Buffalino carefully protected secrecy, and after its publication, Buffalino was determined to silence anyone who would shed more light on this activity. He got wind that Hoffa and some other mobsters, including Sam Momo, Giacana, and John Roselli, were going to meet with the church committee, which was looking into the CIA and its activity in Cuba. Sure enough, Giacana, Roselli, and Hoffa were all killed in various ways after Buffalino heard about their plans. I mean, it could be a stretch, but it honestly makes sense, in my opinion, that Hoffa, he obviously had issues with Russell Buffalino, Frank Searin, and his story, but, you know, multiple people, and then there's Frank Fitzsimmons, that always, always, like, has, has popped out as me as very suspicious and more than like, more than likely involved in Hoffa's disappearance. That's why Frank Sheeran's story is very interesting say the least but makes the most sense in my opinion but last thing i wanted to say was michael franchese franchese i can't pronounce all these fucking names but anyways he says that 
He knows who killed Jimmy Hoffa. That Frank Sheeran is just a liar looking for publicity and that. Okay, only like 10, 20 mobsters have, have confessed saying they killed Hoffa. But anyways, okay, this guy, he's very, he's pretty famous for his gas scam. He's an ex-mobster with the New York family. He has a whole YouTube channel, multiple interviews, and he says he knows who kills off and he's an old partner as is, and that he has a tape that is related to the Hoffa disappearance, and that he and that many people want to get it from him, but he won't, and that the hint he gives is that Hoffa, or Hoffa is, is very wet. <laughs> I mean, I can't say he's lying, and, and he also says that Hoffa will never be found, but yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if he is really confessing to it. I mean, I really doubt it, honestly, but I mean, he could be telling the truth. He just hears things, but I don't know. My guess is probably not true either. But I would really love for you guys to leave a comment or anything. Let me know because I'd love to make more podcast type videos about Jimmy Hoffa or other mafia mysteries. Thank you and goodbye. P.S. If you have any other video ideas, please leave them in the comments. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Lock his ass up. Your bitch man on my dick cause she gon' give it up. Give it up. And we in the cut, in the fucking cut. <laughs> and I'm with Jojo and folks. Where we go? We go, dad. Man, we kick it like we're in the punt. Phone them, they I'm fucked up. So it's time for me to go in. Blood. I'm out here. These Barkley <laughs> niggas do it seven times. Nigga, fuck Tim's. Don't give a fuck. Go got dressed. Cause nigga, I shoot him many times. I'm fucked up, but don't give a fuck. I turn my back to a fuck boy. Got a lot of guns. Don't play with toys.